In this video, we're going to solve an interesting trigonometric equation using some machinery from abstract algebra. So let's look at the problem. We want to solve tangent of x minus tangent of 2x equals 2 times the square root of 3. So we'll use two tools in order to find our solution. The first will be this sum angle formula for tangent. So we have tangent of alpha plus beta equals tangent of alpha plus tangent of beta divided by one minus tangent of alpha times tangent of beta. So we won't derive that, but I'm sure you can find a derivation of that if you'd like. Next, we're gonna use Gauss's lemma for a unique factorization domain. So this is one small part of the solution. So if this looks foreign to you, maybe don't turn away, but just look at how we're gonna apply it in the solution. And if you find it interesting, you can look at my playlist of abstract algebra and build yourself up to understanding this lemma. And that says that if D is a UFD, so that's a unique factorization domain, and R in D is a root of this polynomial, so it's x to the n, so that's a monic polynomial because it has a coefficient of one as the leading term, plus a n minus one, x to the n minus one, all the way down to a one x plus a zero. So like I said, that's in d adjoin x, it's a polynomial with coefficients in the unique factorization domain. Then the root of the polynomial must divide the constant term. So this is a generalization of something that you might be familiar with for polynomials with integer coefficients. Okay, so let's get going. So we'll fir first transform this equation using this formula where alpha equals beta equals x. So that's gonna change this equation to tangent of x minus two times tangent of x over one minus tangent squared of x equals two root three. So that follows pretty quickly from that sum angle formula. Now the next thing that I wanna do is multiply this entire equation by this one minus tangent squared of x in order to clear the denominator. So let's see what I get when I do that. So that's gonna give me tan x minus tangent cubed of x when we hit this first term. Then we have minus two tangent of x. That's what we get when we clear the denominator for that term. And then finally, that's going to be equal to 2 times the square root of 3 minus 2 times the square root of 3 tangent squared x. Okay, so now from here, I'm going to make a change of variables being inspired by the fact that this is a cubic polynomial in the variable tangent of x. So I'm going to set y equal to tangent of x, and then we'll have a polynomial in the variable y. And so I'll do a little bit of simplification while we do this. So notice here we have tangent of x minus 2 tangent of x. So that'll give us negative tangent of x on the left-hand side, which is the same thing as negative y. And then we have minus y cubed. And then over on the right-hand side, we have 2 root 3 minus 2 root 3 y squared. So now we want to rearrange this. So we have a polynomial equals 0. So that's going to be y cubed minus 2 root 3 y squared plus y plus 2 root 3. Like I said, that's going to be equal to 0. And now this is going to be seen as a polynomial with coefficients in z adjoin root 3. In other words, it's the integers with the inclusion of the square root of 3. And that, in fact, is something called a Euclidean domain, which is, in fact, itself a unique factorization domain. So now we want to look for roots of this polynomial. And we're going to use this fact that roots from z adjoin root 3 must divide 2 root 3. And so this is using Gauss's lemma. So these are like our integers in this case. Instead of the integers, we have this slightly bigger object, z adjoin root 3, but we still have this rule where if we have a root of a monic polynomial, that root must divide the constant term. Okay, so that gives us only a few possibilities for the roots from z adjoin root 3. The first one is plus minus one, then plus minus two, plus minus root three, and plus minus two root three. Those are all of the divisors of two root three inside of z adjoin root three. So now all we have to do is check those eight, and we'll see that one of them works, and the one that works is the square root of three works. 
So in other words, that is a root of this polynomial. So what that tells us is that we can write y cubed minus 2 root 3 y squared plus y plus 2 root 3 as y minus the square root of 3 times some quadratic polynomial. And that's where we'll pick up the next board. So far we've seen that our goal equation via the substitution y equals tangent of x is equivalent to finding the roots of this cubic polynomial. So y cubed minus 2 root 3 y squared plus y plus 2 root 3. And using some tricks from abstract algebra involving unique factorization domains, we were able to guess one of the roots, and that is the square root of 3. So that allows us to factor this as y minus the square root of 3 times a to-be-determined quadratic polynomial, which I've just left blank over there. So given the fact that the coefficient of y cubed is 1 and the coefficient over here of y is 1, we know that in this polynomial, the coefficient of y squared also has to be 1. So we can just put y squared there. And now next, we see that the constant term here is 2 times the square root of 3. The constant term here is negative the square root of 3. So that tells us that the constant term here needs to be negative 2. Okay, great. And now we don't have enough information to very, very quickly figure out the y term. And so let's go ahead and leave that undetermined. So plus a times y. And now what we'll do is partially expand the right hand side and compare the coefficient of y on the right hand side with the coefficient of y on the left hand side. So let's notice that we get the coefficient of y on the right hand side two different ways from multiplying negative root 3 to a times y and then also from multiplying y to negative 2. So that's going to give us negative root 3 a minus 2 times y. So that is the coefficient of y that's happening over there on the right hand side. But then the coefficient of y on the left hand side is just the number 1. So that gives us this pretty simple equation to solve. We can solve 1 equals negative root 3a minus 2. Okay, so now we can add 2 to both sides. That gives us negative root 3a equals 3. We can divide both sides by negative root 3. So that gives us a equals negative 3 over root 3. But now we can write 3 as root 3 squared. So that gives us negative root 3 for a. So now what I can do is go ahead and replace this plus a here with minus root 3 times y. Great. And now we have our um, factorization of this cubic into a linear polynomial and a quadratic polynomial. So I'll go ahead and erase this and then we'll finish it off. So now we have our cubic polynomial factored into a linear polynomial and a quadratic polynomial. So now in order to find all of the roots of this cubic polynomial, we need to find the roots of this quadratic polynomial. So in other words, we need to solve y squared minus root 3y minus 2 equals 0. And we'll do that with the quadratic formula. So I'll just put like a squiggly arrow here and then QF for quadratic formula. So notice here we'll have y equals, so it'll be negative b, so that's going to be root 3 plus minus the square root of b squared, so that's going to be 3 minus 4 times a times c, so that's going to be plus 8 all over 2. So notice here we get root 3 plus minus root 11 over 2. Okay, fantastic. But now we know we have three roots for this polynomial. We have y equals root 3, and then we have y equals uh, root 3 plus root 11 over 2, and y equals root 3 minus root 11 over 2. But now we're ready to use this to find solutions to our original equation. So that means we need to solve tangent of x equals root 3, tangent of x equals root 3 plus root 11 over 2, and then tangent of x equals root 3 minus root 11 over 2. So these last two do not have a quick, simple form that we can write down. So we'll just write down x equals arctan of root 3 plus root 11 over 2, and x equal arctan of root 3 minus root 11 over 2. So that's a little bit of a cop-out, but I think that's okay.
but root three is a commonly known value of tangent and it occurs when x equals pi over three. Obviously we can add to this any multiple of pi to get infinitely many solutions, just as we could add any multiple of pi to those as well to get infinitely many solutions. Okay, so that's a good place to stop.